What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. We've got some big plans for today. We're gonna finish up the engine, I'm gonna drain the oil, see if there's any metal flakes in that, and then we're gonna start tearing down the transmission. Like I said in one of my previous videos, I do have a Haynes manual for GM automatic transmissions that'll help with uh, disassembly and assembly. And I also found an ATSG service manual online specifically for the 204R. Uh, ATSG is Automatic Transmission Service Group. It's got some super cool stuff in there, super helpful things like some diagnostic charts. Basically like if you were having this problem, check this stuff out. Just about ready to start tearing down. I got tools, I got coffee, let's get it going. All right, so before I get too far into this video, I just wanna say I am not a professional. This is not a step-by-step -step or me trying to show you what the right thing is to do. I'm just simply following the manual. So every transmission is gonna be a little different. The one that I'm working on, as we'll see a little bit further down the line, was built by a performance shop, so some things are gonna be different. And that was a challenge in itself, trying to figure out what those differences were and how to deal with those going forward. So throughout this video, you'll hear me say the next step is blank. I'm just following the manual. I'm not trying to show you guys what to do, say this is the right way to do it. I'm just following what the manual is saying. So little, little disclaimer. All right, so just looking at the oil, it doesn't really look like anything shiny is coming out of it. Doesn't look like there's any metal flakes, no sparkles. It's a little cold. I mean, obviously it's cold because the engine wasn't running, but I think this doesn't look too bad. So again, super good news. Just furthering the uh, furthering the thought that the engine isn't hurt, which is good. Like I said, the valve train is rated for like 5,500 RPM, and when the transmission went up to like 6,500, so this is all just stuff. This is all precautionary stuff. Just trying to make sure that nothing's hurt, making sure nothing is uh, nothing's broken, nothing's bad with the motor. So this gives us the confidence to put it back together and. Run it again in the, run it again come April. All right, well I'm gonna let that finish draining and we'll, uh, we'll start working on the transmission here. All right, so let's check these out. Basically what the diagnostic chart does is it says if you are having an issue, for example, this one says if you don't have drive in the drive range, wow, I can't believe I just did that. So basically what this says is if you're having an issue where you're not getting a two to three shift, you wanna take a look at these components right in this column and then you want to check if this is the issue that's going on with them. So it's very handy. What I think we're going to do, because a lot of this stuff, I think, for this stuff, I think is going to be deeper in the transmission. We're going to take a, we're going to start disassembling, following the Haynes manual, literally a step-by-step, -step, picture by picture process. I think this is going to be super helpful. Uh, so we'll get going. So first step, we're going to tap out the output shaft oil seal. Take a screwdriver and a hammer. Tap this out of here. Now these are replaceable online for like five, six bucks, so I'm not worried about trying to reuse this at all. All I'm trying to do is just get it out of here. All right, and that's step one. That looks like it was okay until I started beating on it. Next step, remove the Speedo gear adapter and gear assembly. That's over on the, that's over on the far side of the transmission here. That's this bit right there. I think pliers may be the way to go with that. So let's see what the... 
That dude just straight up twisted off. That dude's a beast. So that's out. This is the next thing to come out. So this is the next thing to come out. So this is the intermediate servo cover. It says use, uh, using a pair of adjustable pliers, twist the cover to break it loose and remove the intermediate servo cover. So let's grab some adjustable pliers. We'll get some, get some big boys. All right, so there is the cover, the O-ring, and the outer servo piston. So that takes care of steps six, seven, and eight. Now I'm gonna withdraw the inner servo piston and band apply pin assembly, which seems to be that right there. And pulling this out of here. So this whole thing comes out of here, just like that. All right, next is turn the transmission over with the oil pan facing up and remove the transmission oil pan. Oh, that's a lot of fluid right just on the table. This is the stuff that you learn. This is the fun that you have when you work on cars and you've never really done it before is you learn that when not all the fluid is out of something and you turn it upside down, chances are all of the stuff on the inside is gonna come to the outside. Now that we've got our, now that we've got our freaking bed of Speedy Dry, let's take off the pan. So that is a 13 millimeter. All right, let's see if we can get that O-ring out of there. All right, next step, disconnect the electrical connector from the transmission case plug by prying the retaining clip open with a small screwdriver. Ed made a very good suggestion to uh, clean up all the speedy drive before, before we get going back with this. So took all that down, throw all of our stuff back on the table here. Good idea to clean things up. Got a nice clean workspace now. Grab our instructions, throw them back on here. We'll get going with the next step. So we left off with uh, our last step was taking the oil filter out right here and the O-ring. So we got that out. Next step is to disconnect the electrical connector from the transmission case plug by prying the retaining clip open with a small screwdriver. Dead open. We're, I guess, off. So now we remove the TCC solenoid bolts Pull a solenoid out of the pump, disconnect the pressure switches, and remove the wiring harness assembly. So we're looking for... I want to say it's this here. Yeah, because matching up the picture, yeah, it's definitely this right here. These are 13 millimeter bolts again. Pull a solenoid out of the pump. So this is the solenoid. 
now out of the pump disconnect the switches wait a minute where does this oh this goes over here okay that's just the outside is that your pressure I think so <clears throat> All right, so that's the solenoid out of there. Next step, remove the bolt retaining the TV linkage and carefully set the bracket, link, and lever assembly aside. Note the assembly of the linkage bracket and link for later assembly. So that's this bit right here. So I took a couple pictures of that. Let's go ahead and take this off. This looks like it's going to be smaller than a 13. I'm going to guess this is probably like a 9 or a 10. All right, and I tried to set that down pretty much exactly how it w goes in. So hopefully we can just plug that back in when we reassemble. So remove the detent spring and roller assembly from the valve body. So detent spring and roller assembly is gonna be this right here. You know what? Remove the remaining valve body bolts and carefully lift the valve body free of the case while disconnecting the manual valve link from the detent lever and manual valve. So, valve body bolts, we got these here, these here. Well, actually, it looks like we got all these here. So all these bolts that are in here need to come out. I need to disconnect the manual valve link from the detent lever and manual valve. I want to say that that's these back here. These are giving me a little bit of trouble here, so time for everybody's favorite accessory, the cheater bar. This is not gonna be a 13, that is gonna be a bigger than 13. 
16. No, certainly not a 19. 17, 17 it do. I'm just realizing now is that some of these bolts are a little bit longer than the other ones so it seems like the longer ones go in some of these raised ports and the smaller ones go in like this these lower ones here so we'll just have to keep that in mind for reassembly so we took took off the one two accumulator took off the spacer plate in the gasket working on the three four accumulator now Took out a bunch of the guide balls. You know, I probably should have been recording when we were taking the guide balls out, but whatever. That's what the internet's for, right, Ed? Right. Now that I'm recording one more time, we've got check ball location one, two, three, and then four, and then there's three that have to go in there. So we found seven balls, seven balls in total. Six are in the bag, one is in, like way in. So now next step. Okay. Now that we've got that all taken care of, take out the governor cover and remove the governor gasket. Okay, so that's the governor and the bolts. This is the spring from the 3-4 accumulator. And now next step is I have to take out the governor assembly. Well, I have to take the gasket first. And that's our governor assembly. Remove the oil pump to case bolts using the special puller. Pull the pump free from the case. I don't suppose you would have that special puller. Like you said, those aren't very tight, but there must be like an O-ring, a couple of sets of O-rings that doesn't have to be tight. Yeah. coming out? Well, it's the, the plate spinning. That's not good. There it is. When you hear that pop, that's a good sound. Yeah. It should come out by hand now, maybe. All right.
that's the oil pump drive. Ed, you are a beast. There you go. So I know I can make another one if I have to, so you can have this too. Oh, thanks. So in the first video, or, or in the first teardown video, I said, you always want to have friends and family around. And that's when you and the boys were around helping take stuff off the motor. What I really meant is you need an old guy around that knows what he's doing. Wait a minute, wait a minute, not old. Seasoned. You, you, you need a seasoned guy around seasoned guy, right? that knows what he's doing and can slap some stuff together, save you 90 bucks, and still get the job done. That, that's experience. That's, that's what, that's exactly what I don't have and what I'm trying to learn in this process. Where did you go? Now that the oil pump's out of there, I took the thrust washer out. Next is to remove the oil deflector plate. So I think this gasket, unless this is the oil deflector plate, but I think You know it's gonna be a pisser. I'm gonna spend the 90 bucks that you saved me on that tool in gaskets. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Reusing gaskets. Uh, I'm not a big fan of reusing gaskets. Yeah. So far, I mean, this Haynes manual's been pretty good. I really, really like that it's got all those pictures. No, that's a nice manual. That's a real nice manual. Now that we got the oil pump housing out, we've got the oil the pump to housing thrust washer also out next step is to remove the oil deflector plate now when i pulled this apart this doesn't really seem to have one so i'm wondering if that's another one of those performance mods we'll remove the fourth gear clutch retaining ring by prying it from the case lugs all right that's that so retain retaining ring is out next step is to grasp the input shaft firmly grasp it and remove the overdrive unit from the case. And that is this right here. And so now this So this is the input shaft and overdrive unit. These are the fourth gear clutch plates. And remove the one remaining steel plate from the case, is what it says. So is there one more steel plate in there? Mm -hmm. This? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, look at that. Remove the overdrive internal gear from the case and remove the thrust bearing from inside the gear. So that. Right? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, see, so I don't, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that. This is that thrust bearing that was supposed to stick to the inside of this, but it stuck to the back of the overdrive unit. So that's all we need right there. I'm gonna leave that right there. Remove the thrust washer from the back side of the gear or from the top of the center support. So that's, that's that piece right there. We already got that. Remove the fourth clutch spring retaining ring from the groove special tool is available to compress the spring retainer, but it can be accomplished by pressing the retainer down by hand. that out and 
remove the fourth clutch spring assembly and fourth clutch piston from the case. So I'm gonna have to move this up here now just to keep things sort of out of the way. So that's the spring. Let's take a look at what the piston looks like. It is that big silver piece. So this must spin or something and be able to come out of here. But I'm not really seeing how. Oh, I guess just like that. Uh, using a 10, millim 10 millimeter socket, using a 10 millimeter socket, remove the two center support bolts. So those are the, that one right there. That's these two. Two center support bolts out. I'm just gonna leave these in there. So, what is that? That's the front internal gear. Took the selective washer and thrust washer out. Remove the needle thrust bearing from the front carrier assembly is the next step. That must be that actually, now that I'm looking at it, because that spins pretty easy. So that must be the needle bearing remove the front carrier assembly. How the hell am I supposed to do that? I guess all it takes is a little bump. So this is the front carrier assembly. and the thrust washer from the front sun gear. And this is the sun gear. Remove the input drum and rear sun gear assembly, which should be this in here. which comes with the thrust washer on the back side. Remove the low reverse clutch housing to case beveled retain ring. All right, so that is right in there. Oh no, sh <laughs> there's our last check ball. Pow! Let's get that out of there. That is super exciting. And that is seven. So what Ed, what Ed and I figured out yesterday was that this is performance built 200 R4s. Apparently there's fewer check balls than stock. So this one only has seven compared to the stock uh, 11. I guess that increases pressure, makes shifts a little harsher, stuff like that, which all that stuff is better for performance. So all seven have now been found. One of them had fallen through the case. So we finally found that last one. So here's where we're at. That is the low reverse clutch system, or let's see what the book actually calls it. That is the low reverse clutch housing. Now that needs a special tool to come out of there, which I don't have. So we're gonna be calling it quits for today. I've got most of the internals out. It doesn't look like anything's damaged. I'm not seeing any powder. I'm not seeing any any signs of burnt clutches, but what I'd like to do is I'd like to take all these apart and just make sure, uh, just make sure nothing else is hurt. But other than that, we also got all this stuff out. This is all like a valve body system and stuff like that. So we'll, uh, we'll have to wait for this new tool to come in. So I don't know if I'm gonna end up making this two videos or just one video, but for now, I've gotta wait until next weekend until I get that tool, which should be here on Thursday. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, 
go ahead and like this video if you want to continue seeing this stuff if you want to keep up with the progress of tearing the transmission down subscribe you will get an update with every new video that i post and you'll be able to follow along throughout this whole process so for now i'll see you next time